Hey everyone, Dan Howard here, and today I'm going to talk to you about grounding. Uh, grounding your canvases, and actually behind me you can see uh, there's about six canvases that I just finished grounding, so I'm going to share my process, and uh, you're going to get to see kind of what I do, and uh, hopefully you'll pick up some tips. So let's get started. So there's two reasons why you want to ground your canvases. Uh, First of all, you want to get a color onto the canvas. Um, whatever this color is that you're going to put onto the canvas is the color that's going to show through the brush strokes. So it's a really good way of warming up a cold winter scene or cooling down a hot summer scene or kind of getting some, it's, it's going to help you control the color a little bit better. But the, the main reason why I use it is it's psychological. I suffer intensely from artistic block at times. And sometimes when I look at a white canvas, it's kind of like, I could do anything. I could do anything. What can I do? Um, so grounding a canvas helps you start that psychological process of creating art. Um, and it kind of get, it gets you started. You've already psychologically made a commitment to the canvas. Um, so that's, those are the two reasons why you want to ground your canvases. Um, couple of tips on what I do. Things that you're going to need to prepare your ground is, first of all, you're going to need a Testitos uh, jar. Um, this is a 15 and a half ounce jar. Works perfectly. Um, this is not sponsored by Testitos, but they are my favorite brand. Um, so a salsa jar, glass jar with a screw top lid. Um, you're going to need a paint. So I use uh, burnt sienna. Um, this is just the cheap 37 mill millimeter, milliliter um, tubes. Um, I use about half of this. I'm going to make about five ounces of this. So about half a tube, five ounces of turps. You're going to need some turpentine. Um, so in pasta medium if you've got it. Um, and a brush. An old crappy brush that you really don't care about. Um, you, I This is the one that I use for all of my grounding. I don't use it for anything else. This is just my grounding brush. You're going to need a bunch of this as well, because um, it gets messy. Um, and some screws. You'll In here you can hear some screws jingling around. This is going to help uh, keep the solution uh, mixed. And um, some canvases as well, some bright white canvases. So I'm going to show you my, uh, my process starting right now. So to make your ground, what you're going to do is you're going to put uh, around about four ounces four to five ounces of uh, turpentine or mineral spirits into your jar. You're then going to put uh, a bunch of screws, washers and things like that in there. You'll squeeze about half of the tube of your um, burnt sienna, maybe a third of the tube. Um, and then about the same quantity of impasto medium if you've got it, if you want to use it. I kind of use it because it helps control the thinner and it, it, it stops it from getting too thin. Um, and then um, if you want to control the color a little bit better, I, I kind of, sometimes burnt sienna can be a little too intense. So um, adding a little bit of ultramarine um, to that is, uh, is kind of going to help um, just knock down that, that intensity of that color. Um, mix it all up and then uh, you can get started on, uh, on this next phase. So um, the first thing that I do is um, I, I attach um, kind of a wooden uh, strip to the back of each of these canvases. These wooden strips are actually, um, they're kind of cut with an angle. You can kind of see the angle there. Um, and the reason I do this is because I have a wall easel in my studio and the wall easel, maybe one time I'll, I'll do a video on, on the wall easel and how to put it together. Um, but this just helps hang these canvases. I, I can literally just throw these canvases up on the wall and they'll lock into place um, with the way that they're, they're cut. Um, so I do this first so that I can hang them straight up onto the, to the easel. Um, if you don't have an easel, you're really going to need to find a place where you can store these canvases uh, because they will remain wet for, um, you know, maybe, a, maybe an hour, maybe. Um, you can see on the carpet there, there's been a couple of times where I placed a canvas down <laughs> and it's it's still wet and now I've got lines on the, car the, on the carpet in the studio. So um, so that's that. So here I'm putting gloves on. Um, oil paints, oil paints have a lot of stuff in them, stuff that you don't want to get into your, into your body. You don't want to absorb that kind of stuff. So um, 
using a uh, using some disposable gloves is a good idea when you're working with oil paints. Also, you're working with turpentine as well. You know, you don't want this kind of stuff getting into your skin. Once or twice is not too bad, but if you're going to be an oil painter for 20, 30 years, you know, that kind of stuff can really um, can kind of add up. So you can see I'm just throwing on the paint, um, not really caring about uh, how where it's going. I'm just caring about how much is on the canvas. I don't want to put too much on because I'm going to wipe this off here. And I'm using these uh, shop rags. Um, and you can vary the intensity of how hard you uh, scrub away at this. If you scrub harder, obviously you're going to wipe more of this stuff off and you're going to end up with a lighter color. Um, if you do it lightly, you're going to end up with a darker color. Um, this mixture here is uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine. Um, so it's kind of a gray brown color, so it's it's not as intense. Um, and you'll also notice that I'm doing the edges as well. Uh, it's important to do the edges of your canvases. Um, I do see a lot of artists just doing the front, which is fine, but I find it really annoying when I see a little bit of that bright white canvas peek out behind the scenes. Um, so uh, so yeah, not a lot not a lot of control going on. Uh, with the brush strokes, just make sure that you get enough on there, but not too much. And this comes with practice. Um, one of the other things is that you're probably going to see chunks of paint, um, unmixed paint, coming through. Uh, that's okay too. You'll end up with flecks of bright uh, ultramarine or bright burnt sienna. That's okay. All of this stuff is going to be painted over eventually. Um, this, like I say, is just psychologically getting you started. Um, so yeah, that's the process. Um, there's really nothing else to it other than uh, making sure that you cover all the edges. Also, you can cover the back of the canvas as well, just that little bit that folds around um, on those back staple canvases. Um, you'll notice that there's there's kind of a rubbed texture on the on the canvas now. Some people try and get it all in lines. Some tr some people try and get it even. I really don't care about that. I'm going to paint over the top of this stuff anyway, so um, don't be too don't be too concerned about it. Um, just get it on there and enjoy this process because if it if you're a if you're an artist that um, deals in abstraction, you're probably used to um, just you know putting on the paint and and working with the paint and working on the canvas um, in an experimental way. But if you're doing things that are landscapes or portraits or things like that um, you use this opportunity to just go nuts and um, and and kind of just have fun with it so there you have it there's my uh process on how to ground campuses. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, leave them below. And uh, for more tips and tricks, and to check out my blog, you can also take a look at www.artofdanhoward.com. We'll see you next time.